In the uh, last couple of videos we've showed you how to install Python and uh, how to manipulate data in Python and what we did with our data manipulation task was we went ahead and built ourselves a numeric data set um, that we can use to predict uh, whether somebody survived or whether somebody died on the Titanic. As we know from SAS, right, there's a whole bunch of different ways we can do that. Um, so what we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to walk through a few different ways we can do that using Python to do some of the things that we did in SAS. Uh, the first thing that we did in SAS, obviously, is to build a regression model. <clears throat> so in this case, we're going to use Python um, and we're going to build a regression model. So I'm going to uh, walk through this script here. You will have a copy of the script available in your, um, in your packet and all the information that we send to you. Um, but it's really uh, going to be much quicker than the data manipulation script. We really did a lot with that data manipulation script. This is actually much simpler. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do, as we talked about, is we're going to load our libraries, and we're going to go ahead and set up our working directory and import our data. <clears throat> You'll note a couple of things about how we import some of these modules. Um, the first three are sort of standard. That's the way we imported them before. But the second ones, we're actually importing a function from a particular model. So we're going to import something called train test split. Train test split is a function um, and it sits within the sklearn.model selection um, package. That means that uh, when we go to use that function, instead of having to write sklearn.model selection dot train test split, we can just refer to it as train test split. Um, same with all of these other ones too. Um, obviously there's a logistic regression model and then there's a confusion matrix and um, the area under the curve um, metric. We'll get to how we're going to use those in a second. Um, first part again, uh, sorry, this, this next part we're just setting up our working directory as I said and importing the data. Um, nothing too complicated going on um, with any of these. I'm just going to make sure I run these as we're stepping through. Right, so now we've uh, loaded our data sets. The first thing we want to do is we want to create our training test, training and test sets. To do that, we're going to use the train test split function. Uh, the train test split function, as we've talked about, takes some arguments. The first thing it takes is our um, data, the data that we want to split up randomly into uh, training and test sets. Uh, and then we take two other arguments, the training size and the test size. So the training size, we picked 75%. Um, we're going to hold out 25% as a test set. Uh, one of the things to note about this function is it actually takes two arguments separated by a comma. So it's going to output the training test first. That's going to go to this variable that we have called train. It's going to output the test set second, and that's going to be assigned to this variable that we call test. Now before we get too deep into this, we are actually going to do one more thing. Um, we're going to take out our target variable from both the training set and the test set, um, and we're going to put it into a new um, into a new variable name. That makes it a little bit easier as we get down. You'll see that, that it's a little bit simpler to um, manipulate some of the functions, but also if we want to include or exclude certain columns as we're working through this, um, we can just exclude them in one place instead of having to go through and making sure we exclude them in multiple places as we use it. So we're going to create uh, two different sets for our training. Um, we're going to have train underscore x. That is all of the training data. And then we're going to create train underscore y. That is our training target. Um, so what we've done is we've taken the, the target, which in this case is survived, and we've dropped it from our training set and kept everything else. And then we've created this series, which is just the target itself. And then we've done the same thing with the test set. Um, what we also want to do is just make sure we have the right columns. Um, so I've just gone ahead and listed out the, the data types or the columns within that train underscore X data set. Um, and you can see that when we do that, we don't have the survived in there. That's what we really want to do. Okay, so now we're going to get into our um, actually training and fitting our model. Uh, so we're going to build a logistic regression model um, for predicting a binary output. That is the function that we imported right up here at the top. There you go, right there on line 5. And to initialize the model, all we need to do um, is give it a name. Right? We're going to assign it to the, a variable called model. And then we're just going to call the logistic regression function. Um, there are arguments you can put in there. We're not going to put any in there. That's just going to keep the defaults for that 
logistic regression model. Um, and then we're going to fit it. So the model.fit uh, method that just takes the training data and the training target. So it's going to be train underscore x and train underscore y. And then it fits the logistic regression model against those two pieces of, uh, of data. All right, and then when it gives us that output, it's just a whole bunch of the, the parameters for the particular log logistic regression that we just ran. Um, that means it's all done. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to try and score our model. Um, so we can do that by just running the model.score. Obviously, you need to fit the model first before you can score it. Um, so we fitted it on train X and train Y. So we're looking at the training accuracy. We're going to say model.score, train, train X and train Y. Um, again, just feeding it the data and then the uh, target. And you can see we got about 80% accuracy out of our logistic regression model. But the real key, of course, is then training it on the testing set. So we're going to call the same function, model.score, except this time we're going to call it with test X, which is the test data, and test Y, which is the test target. Um, so 80% on the training data and 77% on the test data. Um, one of the other ways we can obviously evaluate it is we can uh, create um, a confusion matrix. Now to do this we need to make some predictions. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to call um, model.predict. Model.predict makes predictions based on new data. So when we call that, stored within this pred y variable, we're going to have a, uh, a series, a list, basically, of all the new predictions. And then we're going to take that and we're going to create a confusion matrix that's based on test y and pred y. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, you can see that um, the output is a bit uh, raw, shall we say, um, but um, you can read it. The uh, top and the sides are both ordered from 0 to 1, so they're going to go in ascending order. So that top row is zeros, the bottom row is 1s, the left column is zeros, and the right column is 1s. So it's uh, it might be reversed from the normal way. Sometimes you get positives on the top, positives on the right. Um, but in this case, it's, uh, as I said, zeros on the top and zeros on the left column. Um, but we do get that. Um, you can get that confusion matrix, which I know is a good way of evaluating um, some of our models. The other thing we can do is we can look at the area under the RUC curve. There's a whole bunch of different metrics that you can use. Um, and there's a link in the script there. You can see to the documentation that's going to take you to um, a list of these ways of evaluating uh, evaluating the model. Um, so right there, we're going to see that the area under the uh, curve is 0.5. Um, so again, that gives us a baseline against which we can test some of these other models as we go through it. Um, so that's how you build and evaluate a uh, regression model in Python. Um, if you have any questions, obviously, please reach out to me via my TA email address uh, and uh, stand by for the, uh, the next video.